Volkswagen's second generation Tiguan has widened its market reach in this lengthened all-space guise to include those who want a third seating row in their mid-sized SUV. Could it be all the car you'll ever really need? The Wolfsburg brand is hoping that potential buyers will see this model in just that way. Increasingly, it's no longer enough to just offer a single mid-sized SUV. The market's now demanding that mainstream makers also provide variants of such models that are lengthened so as to be able to incorporate a third seating row. Volkswagen couldn't ignore this trend and hasn't, bringing us this bigger all-space Tiguan derivative. It's not hugely larger than the standard version, 215 millimeters longer with a wheelbase that's extended by 106 millimeters. Still, as we'll see, all that's enough to make quite a difference to the way that you can potentially use this car and quite a difference to the way that Volkswagen can sell it too. The standard Tiguan isn't really big enough for the brand to offer in countries like America, but in pumped up all space form, it's a perfect fit as an entry level SUV for that market. The additional rear inches also freeing up the extra second row room that burly Yankee buyers often need. This helps explain why Volkswagen has done more than just add some extra length to this model. The styling of the front end and the roof is different too. And why this all-space variant is built on the other side of the Atlantic from its standard stablemate. Uh, at the company's factory in Puebla, Mexico, the plant that already assembles Beetle and Jetta models. The distance that fully assembled versions of this car have to come to sell in our market isn't what accounts for this larger Tiguan's apparently much higher price point though. That's down to the fact that for this variant, Volkswagen has ignored the lower spec and lower powered trim and engine options that you can have in the standard body style, seeking to position the allspace as a stepping stone to its larger, more luxurious Touareg SUV. So it's not a budget buyer's choice in this segment, but if you're a Volkswagen customer who was already after a plusher Tiguan, the prospect of extra seats and extra space could well appeal. But will this model also interest families shopping amongst upmarket versions of more affordable contenders in this sector, like Nissan's X-Trail, Peugeot's 5008, and the Skoda Kodiak, the car that shares most uh, of this Tiguan's engineering? Well, that's a much tougher ask. Time to put this car to the test. You wouldn't expect the changes made to this slightly lengthened all-space model to have much effect on drive dynamics, nor have they. There certainly isn't the slightly clumsier feel through the corners that you might notice if you upgraded from, say, an ordinary Tiguan to Volkswagen's luxury segment Touareg model. And that's despite the fact that this seven seat SUV isn't much shorter than one of those, measuring in at over 4.7 meters in length. If anything, the stretched wheelbase has had a positive effect on this model's road going demeanor. The extra weight and longer stance helping the suspension smooth over bumps through higher speed corners. Ride quality is an established strength of the ordinary Tiguan and remains an attribute here, aided immeasurably by the high-tech MQB platform that sits beneath the bodywork. This light, stiff setup has allowed the engineers to get closer to that holy grail of vehicle dynamics, the reduction of body roll without the need for unpleasantly firm suspension. You'll notice this if you come to this particular Tiguan having previously tested a few notable rivals. But you may also notice that there's no particular fun to be had in throwing this Volkswagen about. Still, its composure when you do, or perhaps when you have to, is impressive, helped by well-weighted steering and an XDS electronic differential lock system that breaks the inside wheels when cornering to help tighten your line around the bend. 
You'll want to know about engines. The lineup dispenses with the feeblest petrol and diesel units offered in the standard Tiguan range, but is otherwise identical and, as with that ordinary model, is heavily orientated towards diesel power. Two litre diesel power to be specific. Uh, Wolfsburg's venerable TDI unit available in three states of tune with 150, 190 and 240 PS outputs. Almost all sales will be of the 150 PS mid-range engine that we're trying here, not only because it's a great all-rounder, but also because it's the variant you have to have to be able to make key choices in the mechanical specification of this model. With the 190 and 240 PS diesel variants, you have to have 4-motion four 4-wheel four drive and DSG automatic transmission. With this 150 PS version, the auto box is optional, and if you specify that, you can also add in the 4-motion system too, if you want it. We've got all-wheel traction and a self-shifter fitted as options on this test car, the DSG Auto, a smooth shifting 7-speed unit that comes complete with steering wheel mounted paddle shifters you'll probably almost never use. Rest to 62 miles an hour occupies 9.8 seconds en route to 124 miles an hour, figures that are respectively only half a second and 3 miles an hour worse than you get in a standard shaped Tiguan fitted with the same engine. You might be tempted by the thought of the 190 PS diesel derivative that makes 62 miles an hour in 8.6 seconds en route to 130 miles an hour. Or at least you might until you find that, like the top BI TDI 240 PS variant, it's only offered at the priciest end of the range. In other words, just take it as red. The 150 PS model is almost certainly the one to have. Should you pause before signing for one to consider the two petrol-powered engine options on offer? Most all space buyers probably won't. A minority interest 180 PS 2 litre TSI unit is provided to go with top trim levels, available only with 4 motion 4 wheel drive and capable of quite a turn of pace, 62 miles an hour in the DSG version 8.2 seconds away en route to 129 miles an hour. More relevant though is the 1.4 litre TSI power plant that props up the lineup, solely available with two wheel drive and developing 150 PS. This unit features the brand's clever ACT active cylinder technology that shuts down the engine's second and third cylinders when they're not needed under low or medium throttle load. The result is near 50 miles to the gallon combined cycle economy that can still be balanced with rapid performance, able to see you to 62 miles an hour in just 9.5 seconds en route to 124 miles an hour. We've referenced the 4-motion four 4-wheel four drive system several times so far. Time to focus a little on that because Volkswagen thinks that more than half of all space owners will want it. Partly that's because, unlike most of its rivals, the brand doesn't limit four-wheel drive only to the priciest variants at the top of the lineup. As we mentioned earlier, you can also have it on the volume 2 litre TDI 150 PS variant we're trying here. That'll be a useful option to take up if you're a tower, because it'll increase the brake towing cut capability by nearly half a tonne to 2,400 kilograms. If you've four motion fitted, you can precisely tailor the way the setup works by using what Volkswagen calls four motion active control, activated via this rotary dial below the gear stick. Turn it to the left and there are two tarmac orientated modes. You get a snow setting for really icy conditions, but the one that you'll regularly be using is the default on-road mode. This gives you eco, normal or sport options to better suit your everyday driving. Plus an individual mode can allow you to specifically tweak the settings for things like the steering, uh, the drivetrain and the adaptive cruise control. Turn the active control dial to the right and you open up the options that will prepare your Tiguan for proper use off the beaten track. Again, there are two settings available, this time branded off-road and off-road individual. Select one of these and almost everything about the car will instantly be optimised for off-piste use. Throttle response, uh, steering feel, stability control thresholds and, if you've auto transmission, gear shift timings too. 
Plus, a useful hill descent system is activated to ease you down slippery slopes, while dynamic cornering lights open up a brighter and wider light pattern to better help you spot potential obstacles. You probably won't want to fiddle with the individual functionality of all these elements, but should you want to, the off-road individual setting uh, provides menu options that will allow you to do so. But does it all actually work when you get on the rough stuff? Better than you think, given that this Volkswagen has a car-like monocoque chassis without much in the way of axle articulation. Plus, there's obviously no low-range gearbox and no way of manually locking the differential for the really sticky stuff. The clever electronics make up for a lot of this, allowing you to scrabble up steep and rocky inclines and keep moving, even when one or more wheels are hanging in the air. It also helps that the ride height is a little higher this time round, especially in four motion models which sit 201mm from the deck, 12mm higher than their front driven stable mates. In the unlikely event that you're planning to test all this capability, you'll want to know the off-road stats. 14.9 degrees of breakover angle, a 14.5 degree departure angle, and a 16.9 degree approach angle that can be improved to 24 degrees by the addition of the revised front bumper that's included in an optional outdoor pack that also gives you extra underbody protection and door sill protectors. A further front underbody guard can also be added. All well and good, but of course you're far more likely to appreciate the 4Motion system's capability throughout the various conditions you'll meet on the road. For this second generation Tiguan design, this setup's been made uh, more effective thanks to a faster apportioning of power to all four wheels via a process that provides pre-activation of the rear clutch and improved operation of the electronic differentials. This derivation of 4Motion has also been designed to work closely with two optional driving systems. One of these is the progressive steering setup that constantly alters the gearing of the steering depending on your inputs, so going lock to lock takes just two turns, allowing you to keep your hands in the same place on the wheel when driving on tight, twisty roads. The other key driving system option is DCC Dynamic Chassis Control, one of those setups that individually adjusts the dampers at each wheel to give better body control, improve ride comfort, or try and achieve a workable combination between the two should the driver override the normal setting and select either sport or comfort modes. If you can do without both of these things, and to be frank you probably can, then there might be enough left in your budget to add in two other really nice options. One is the active info display that completely replaces the instrument binnacle dials with a brilliantly detailed and also infinitely customizable 12.3 inch TFT display screen. The other is the superb trailer assist feature, a must if, like me, you have to occasionally tow and you're useless at parking when hitched up. The system works with a rear view camera and takes all the hassle and guesswork out of this process, counter steering your trailer with commands that you can make via a joystick control that would normally be the mirror adjustment switch. It's really well thought through just like pretty much every other dynamic element of this Tiguan. In all space form, this Tiguan ought to be just slightly bigger, which of course it is, but somehow the changes made in creating this larger model have created something more. A model with the demeanor of a slightly larger SUV. This is the Tiguan all grown up. Something that, of course, you can best appreciate from a profile perspective. From this central B-pillar backwards, everything's been redesigned to allow for the 215 millimetres of additional length. Now, as part of that, the wheelbase is 106 millimetres longer, uh, stretching between black plastic trimmed wheel arches, housing rims of either 18 or 20 inches in size. 
The bodywork of this bigger variant follows a different contour from that of the standard model, and the rear part of the side window design features a sharper curve upwards, where it rises directly behind the C-pillar. The roof's new too, featuring its own unique set of structural lines and framed by these standard silver roof rails. More surprisingly, there are also changes at the front, where the radiator grille is higher in comparison to the sander car. Plus, the bonnet is more upright at the front and carries different accent lines from front to rear. Otherwise, it's just as it is with the ordinary model, the wide grille emphasising the increase in width of the second generation Tiguan design and flanked by headlamps that come with the option of full LED illumination. These lower front fog lamps are also LED lit. At the back, things have been left much as they were, with chiselled lines surrounding the three-dimensional light clusters. An integrated diffuser incorporates the tailpipes and makes up the lower part of the bumper, while up above there's a neat rooftop spoiler. More important though, of course, as usual, is the stuff you can't see, specifically the stiffer, sophisticated golf-style MQB platform underpinnings that lie beneath the precise, carefully contoured lines. All well and good, but what you'll really want to know is just how much difference the all-space design changes have made in terms of luggage capacity and rear seat room. Time to see. We'll start with the impact on passenger space and passenger access. Now that's aided hugely by these much longer rear doors. Most of the time, of course, the folks you're carrying will want to take a pew here in the middle row, where Volkswagen says they'll enjoy 54 millimetres more knee room than they get in an ordinary Tiguan. That's assuming this rear bench is set in the correct position, as in the ordinary model it can slide in separate sections backwards or forwards over a range of 180 millimetres. The headroom isn't too bad either, even if you've got a model fitted with this huge panoramic glass roof. And useful seat back tables are provided as standard. It's also nice to note that the seat backs recline for greater comfort on longer journeys. And this centre transmission tunnel isn't quite as awkwardly prominent as it is in some rivals. So if you do have to accommodate three adults back here, things will be slightly easier for the middle occupant. When there's only two of you, a central armrest folds to reveal a couple of integrated cup holders. We approve of these deep door bins and you get a three zone climate system with these separate rear compartment controls below twin vents and 12 volt and USB points. What about the third row seating? Bigger mid-sized SUVs than this one offer fold-out luggage area seating that's distinctly cramped, so our spatial expectations here weren't great. Sure enough, if you pull up the seat shoulder catch to reach the very back and push this second row chair forward, you'll be accessing a necessarily rather restricted space. Volkswagen suggests that this area is ideally suited to folk of less than five feet two inches in height. Children, in other words. All well and good, that's what most potential owners will want this third row seating for. But given that remit, you have to wonder why the brand has forgotten something as fundamental as the fitment of Isofix child seat fastenings back here. To be fair to Wolfsburg, uh, lots of its segment competitors make the same mistake. But so thorough is the company in other areas of its design that we'd expect it better here. Should you have really drawn the short straw and be confined back here as an adult, then as usual in a mid-sized seven-seat SUV, you'll find that the high floor line necessitated by having to make space for a four-wheel drive system means that your knees will be a little uncomfortably positioned up towards your chest. Still, if those in the middle row can be persuaded to push their bench forward, it'd be bearable back here for fully-sized folk on shorter trips. A tray is provided for the right-hand occupant, while the person on the left also gets a cup holder and access to a 12-volt socket. OK, so we've covered the additional room that this bigger all-space body style frees up for people. 
But what about packages? Let's check out the luggage area accessed via this standard electrically activating tailgate, which can be specified as here to raise with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper if you're approaching the car laden down with heavy bags. Once the hatch is raised, the room you'll have to play with depends, of course, on whether the third row chairs are upright. If they are, uh, you'll have 230 litres of carriage space. That's about the same as you get in the boot of a super mini and probably enough for an average sized supermarket visit. Now, to give you some class perspective, that's 40 litres less than you get in a rival Skoda Kodiak, but 24 litres more than you get in this configuration in a Land Rover Discovery Sport. The boot area is covered by this lid, below which is slotted in the retractable tonneau cover you might need when you only want to use the middle seating row. Nice boot area touches include a 12 volt socket on the left, while on the right there's a fold out bag hook and this smart removable and rechargeable LED torch. Go for the neat optional swiveling tow bar and you can activate that via this left hand cargo sidewall switch. Now, if you need more room, then folding these third row chairs into the floor is easy, provided the second row seats aren't pushed all the way back. If they're pushed all the way forward, then once you've done that, you'll have 700 litres of space to play with, 85 litres more than you'd get in the similarly configured boot of an ordinary Tiguan. Realistically, of course, it'll be a little less than that because the middle bench won't normally be pushed right up towards the front seats. Again, this total capacity is a little less than you'd find in that rival Skoda Kodiak model, but a little more than you get in a Land Rover Discovery Sport. Still need more room? Well, if you've longer things to carry, it'll help that the middle bench splits 40, 20, 40, so you can flatten the center section and push through longer items like skis without disturbing a couple of passengers seated in the center of the car. If you need to flatten the middle backrest, then you can do it by using these neat latches on either sidewall on each side of the cargo bay. This, by the way, is functionality that annoyingly costs extra with that Skoda model I mentioned. Now that frees up 1,775 litres of space, 120 litres more than an ordinary Tiguan can offer. Though again, some rivals can deliver more, few of them can build on that total capacity in the way this Tiguan can, thanks to its standard provision of a fold-flat passenger seat at the front, which would be a real boon if you were wanting to carry, say, a surfboard or a ladder. Enough on the spatial advantages that this all-space body style can offer. Let's finish with a focus on an area of this larger Tiguan model that hasn't changed, the front seat environment. And remind ourselves just why a seat behind the wheel of this Volkswagen SUV persuades so many potential customers to buy one. Basically, the appeal is that here you're getting near premium segment quality at near volume segment pricing. True, if you really are being picky, you'll find some lower grade scratchier plastics lower down the dash and on the door cards, but for the most part, everything feels polished, classy and meticulously designed. Take these narrow, precisely worked aluminium frames around the air vents, for example. The extra technology in offer helps with this impression, and it's certainly something that your dealer salesperson will want to emphasize. You get more of it in the all space as all variants come complete with the upgraded Discover Navigation version of the brand's classy 8-inch glass-fronted center dash infotainment display. As well as sat-nav, this touchscreen effectively deals with all the usual DAB stereo, Bluetooth phone and car informational functions. And it includes a three-year subscription to a brilliantly helpful Carnet Guide and Inform setup that gives you in-car online access to a whole range of useful journeying information. Everything from traffic news, weather and news feeds to information on fuel and parking prices in your place of destination. Every all-space model also gets Volkswagen's clever App Connect setup. Now this is the starting point for the brand's CarNet connectivity system and the key tool for bringing the best functions of your smartphone into your Tiguan via the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and MirrorLink systems.
Once this software is activated, you're all set to enjoy things you maybe never thought you'd be able to access on the move. For example, Apple CarPlay supports Spotify, the music streaming service, as well as the video calling app Skype and Stitcher, which offers a variety of radio shows and podcasts. Android Auto works with a variety of apps, including Instant Messengers, WhatsApp and KIK, and Google Hangouts too. Volkswagen also adds to these with a further range of clever apps you're free to download. Take the Media app, which will allow rear passengers to control in-car entertainment via their phones or tablets. Then there's Mirrorlink's Cam Connect app, which enables the infotainment display to be connected to a GoPro camera, which can be mounted elsewhere in the vehicle or even in a towed trailer, so you can easily keep an eye on kids in the back or animals who might be in the boot or, say, in a horse box behind. Arguably, what's even cleverer is the potential that Volkswagen's designers have created for much of this information to be brought directly into your line of sight, courtesy of an active info display package that's optional at entry level in the range and standard on plusher models. Now, we're getting used to this kind of thing from various brands now. A 12.3-inch TFT screen that completely replaces the conventional instrument binnacle dials and can be configured to show analog look gauges, um, a full-screen sat-nav, and various stages in between. On a base-spec model like this one, you get the usual conventional dials separated by a colour trip computer display. Enough on infotainment. What else might you need to know about the front cabin of this Tiguan? Well, getting settled behind the three-spoke leather-stitched wheel is easy thanks to the wide range of adjustment on offer, particularly if you've got the brilliant 14-way adjustable Ergo Comfort seat. And in proper SUV style, you sat quite high up, so the view out is pleasingly commanding. True, over-the-shoulder visibility is slightly compromised by the chunky rear pillars, but standard all-round parking sensors help to mitigate that. As for practicality, well, yes, that's also been well thought through, or at least most of it has. The deep storage box between the front seats doesn't have any media connectivity ports. 12-volt uh, aux-in and WSB sockets are provided in an open compartment in front of the gear lever, but that leaves any handset you choose to connect in open to prying eyes. There's no overhead compartment provided for your sunglasses either. Otherwise, there's not much to gripe about. Uh, there are deep door bins, a decently sized air-conditioned glove box, a dash top storage area, and a cubby by the driver's right knee. You also get pull-out drawers beneath both front seats, a netted storage pouch in the front passenger footwell, and twin cup holders by the electronic handbrake that are concealed by a neat sliding cover. Now, as we said elsewhere in this film, this all-space model starts at a much higher price point than the standard Tiguan. For this slightly bigger SUV, you're talking from just under £30,000 for the entry-level version, with prices rising to around £40,000 at the top of the range. For reference, the standard body style is priced from just under £24,000, but that comes with lower-powered petrol and diesel engines and more Spartan S and SE spec levels that the Allspace lineup doesn't bother with. The entry point for Allspace ownership is SE navigation trim and a TSI or TDI engine with 150 PS. That's what we've got here. For such a model, this lengthier seven-seat body style attracts a premium of just over £2,600 more than its standard-shaped stablemate. Other Volkswagen SUVs, like the smaller T-Roc, have demonstrated a big swing in buyer preferences away from diesel to petrol. But that's not the case here, with over 95% of likely all-space buyers expected to choose one of the three available two-litre TDI engines on offer. This is despite the fact that there's quite a premium to switch from TSI petrol to TDI diesel power, nearly £2,200 in the case of the volume 150 PS models. Now we can see why almost all TDI buyers will stick with this 150 PS version of Volkswagen's diesel unit. After all, there aren't really too many reasons for finding the £1,250 premium necessary to get this power plant with 190 PS. And the top twin-turbo 240 PS diesel variant is a £40,000 car. 
Just over half of Allspace owners will be retail customers, and the brand expects a similarly quite equal split between front-driven and four-motion four-wheel drive models. The four-motion system can't be had on the base 1.4 TSI. It's available as an option for just over £1,500 more on the 2.0-litre TDI 150 PS variant, and you have to have it with the more powerful diesel models and the 2.0-litre TSI petrol variant. The other key option is DSG automatic transmission, which works with six speeds on the base petrol 1.4, but with seven speeds elsewhere in the range. The DSG option costs £1,600 on the 150 PS petrol and diesel models, but you have to have it with the more powerful engines. Enough with Tiguan Allspace product semantics. How does its pricing compare with that of obvious rivals? Let's see. Now, we ought to start by saying that this car theoretically could interest a wide range of family buyers. After all, if your family needs seven seats, the kind of money being asked here could get you three seating rows with a lot more space in the form of a large segment seven-seat MPV people carrier, a Ford Galaxy or a Volkswagen Charan, for instance. The primary target market here, though, is that for SUVs, so it's against equivalent mid-sized seven-seat models in that market sector that we'll be making our key comparisons. Start to look carefully at the various segment options in this regard, and this Volkswagen's value proposition becomes much clearer. You'll find plenty of so-called experts pointing out that seven-seat D-segment SUV competitors like Nissan's X-Trail, Peugeot's 5008, uh, Mitsubishi's Outlander and Skoda's Kodiak might save you as much as six to seven thousand pounds over a Tiguan Allspace. But that ignores the point we made earlier about this model lacking the poverty spec trim levels that would allow it to compete on more equal terms with rivals of that sort. To compare like with like, you have to look at mid to higher spec versions of those competing SUVs. And when we did that, using the most popular Tiguan Allspace model, this 2-litre TDI SE Navigation variant, as our benchmark, we found that a very different pricing picture emerged. Take the Skoda Kodiak, potentially a particularly tempting alternative, as it shares this Volkswagen's MQB platform and almost all of its technology and engineering. Once you give that car seven seats and a spec that will give you navigation and most of the same sort of equipment as you get on an Allspace, a two-litre TDI Kodiak would only save you about £1,100 over the car we have here, a premium you'd probably get back in higher residual values on this Volkswagen when the time came to sell. And it's the same story with the other models just mentioned. Uh, a decently equipped seven-seat, two-litre diesel-powered Nissan X-Trail, Peugeot 5008, or Mitsubishi Outlander could easily cost you well over £30,000. You'd even pay that for a plusher Sangyong Rexton. So much for value brand pricing. Perhaps you're wondering why we haven't mentioned the three other competitor SUVs that more readily tend to spring to mind when thoughts turn to seven-seat models of this kind. Kia Sorento, Hyundai Santa Fe, and Land Rover's Discovery Sport. That's because, in each case, if you match the proposition precisely against what's available in the Tiguan Allspace lineup, you'll need a budget starting from around £35,000 for ownership. There are no petrol engines on offer from these three contenders, and in the case of the Kia and the Hyundai, there's no efficient 150 PS diesel option either. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that this Volkswagen is what you want, then you're going to need to know just how generous the Wolfsburg brand has been when it comes to standard equipment. Well, let's see. Even this entry-level SE navigation trim gets you smart 18-inch alloy wheels, front fog lights, an electrically operable tailgate, silver roof rails, and three-zone electronic climate control with separate settings for rear seat passengers. Plus, there's Volkswagen's full Discover SatNav system, uh, which comes with an 8-inch touchscreen, uh, an 8-speaker DAB stereo system with Bluetooth phone connectivity, uh, an SD card reader and a USB connection. Also included is the brand's clever Carnet Guide and Inform setup that gives you in 
car online access to a whole range of useful journeying information, everything from traffic news, weather and news feeds, uh, to information on fuel and parking prices in your place of destination. Additionally, you get the brand's useful Carnet App Connect package that allows you to link in your smartphone via the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and MirrorLink systems. It's all great if you happen to be particularly tech savvy. If you aren't, then don't worry. Volkswagen also includes an old-fashioned CD player in the glove box too, which isn't always included as standard on cars these days. Um, other standard features fitted right across the Tiguan Allspace range that are worthy of note run to a fold flat front passenger seat for long loads, uh, power folding mirrors, rear tinted glass, auto headlamps and wipers, and front and rear parking sensors. Plus, you'll find front comfort spec seats with lumbar adjustment, an auto dimming rear view mirror, second row seat back tables, and an impressive roster of basic safety equipment that we'll come to in a few minutes. Plus, the driving experience is improved with ACC adaptive cruise control and high beam assist, which automatically dips your main beam to avoid dazzling oncoming traffic. If you've a four motion variant, you'll also get the brand's driver profile selection system that allows you to tweak steering feel, throttle response, and on DSG Auto models, gear change timings to suit the way that you want to drive. Of course, you could always go further. If budgets permitted, we'd want to look at trading up to an SEL variant, because at this level in the range, you get the real niceties. That Discover navigation system works not only on the 8-inch center stack monitor, but also as part of the Active Info display, a 12.3-inch TFT setup that completely replaces the usual instrument binnacle dials with fully customizable menus and information. We'd also like the 14-way adjustable velour trimmed Ergo Comfort sports seats that are heated, have electric lumbar adjustment and feature a massage function. In addition, Tiguan Allspace SEL buyers get larger 19-inch wheels, LED tail lamps, a huge glass panoramic roof and keyless entry with hands-free boot opening. You also get full LED headlights featuring Volkswagen's clever Dynamic Light Assist system, which varies the LED beam pattern so as to better light the road ahead and take account of other drivers. Inside, there's an interior ambient lighting package too. There isn't much that the top of the range R-Line trim level can add to this tally, apart from even larger 20-inch wheels, an exterior styling pack with a body-coloured rear spoiler, and a few sportier touches in the cabin, including stainless steel pedals. To enhance the driving experience, there's lowered sports suspension and a more direct progressive steering system. Plus, on all R-Line variants, you get that driver profile selection system that I just mentioned. Overall, though, it's probably better, we think, to order a base SC navigation model like this one and simply add in the extra features you need. Not all of them cost more, either. Using the standard App Connect package that, as we said, is fitted to all models, a couple of really nice high-tech features can be downloaded from a provided Volkswagen website free of charge by Android users and be accessed using the MirrorLink function. One example is the Media Control app that allows passengers to control the Discover Navigation infotainment system using their smartphones or tablets. So kids in the back, for example, can find their favourite radio station, then respond to bellowed adult commands to turn it down. If you've one of those natty GoPro cameras, you can also keep a better eye on them once you've downloaded the Cam Connect app which can beam a picture of the rear cabin onto the center dash screen. Alternatively, you might want to keep tabs on, say, your dog in the boot area. Equestrian folk towing a horse box, meanwhile, could use the Cam Connect setup uh, with the GoPro in the trailer, then keep an eye on their horses in transit. Neat. As for other media options, well, the Active Info Display customizable instrument screen can be ordered separately if the variant that you've chosen doesn't include it. 
and you can embellish the Discover navigation system with voice control and the brand's Carnet security and service system. The latter setup allowing you to control various aspects of your car via your smartphone and including an e-call emergency service feature for automatic accident notification. The big ticket infotainment option though is Volkswagen's flagship Discover Navigation Pro media setup with its larger 9.2 inch color touchscreen. This introduces gesture control to this segment for the first time, allowing common functions to be activated with just a twirl of your finger. Plus the package also includes voice activation, a 64 gigabyte hard drive, 3D mapping, a DVD player, and an uprated, even more informative version of the Carnet Guide and Inform package we mentioned earlier. As for driving stuff, well, more enthusiastic Tiguan Allspace drivers will want to look at the DCC dynamic chassis control setup that allows you to set the ride up to suit the road you're on and the mood you're in. It's a better alternative than the firmer sport suspension option. And beyond that, well, the optional progressive steering system works well, a setup that constantly alters the gearing of the steering depending on your inputs. It means that going lock to lock takes just two turns, allowing you to keep your hands in the same place on the wheel when driving on tight, twisty roads. In the unlikely event that those tight, twisty routes will often be off the beaten track, you'll want to specify the outdoor pack that includes extra underbody protection, uh, door sill protectors, and a unique front bumper with an extended 24 degree angle of approach. If you want more underbody protection, there's an additional optional front underbody guard available. There's more too. Take the optional head-up display that can project key information onto a little glass panel that rises up on top of the dash so that it's more in your line of sight. There's also a park assist feature that comes with a rear view camera and can automatically steer you into the tightest spaces. If you specify the optional swiveling tow bar that we've got in this case, then you'll want this setup to come complete with Volkswagen's brilliant trailer assist feature that we've been trying here, by which you can maneuver this Tiguan via the mirror adjustment switch as it steers itself to park whatever you're towing. Now, if I were a caravaner, that feature alone would sell me this car. As for other optional niceties, well, on a base SE navigation variant like this one, you'll be given the opportunity to pick and choose in adding in key features from the next trim level up. Uh, things like the LED headlamps and tail lights, keyless entry, ambient interior lighting, and the more supportive Ergo Comforts front seats with their powered lumbar adjustment and massage function. Across the range, we might also want to look at the optional wireless phone charger and the Dynaudio Excite stereo upgrade that gives you 400 watts of Dolby Pro Logic surround sound via an eight channel digital amplifier. Other tempting extras that you could add include a heated windscreen, headlamp washers, full Vienna leather trim, heat for the steering wheel and the rear seats, and a winter pack that can warm the windscreen washer jets along with the front and rear seats. On to aesthetics. There are a couple of alloy wheel options with rims of either 18 or 20 inches in size. As for paint color, well, unless you want your Tiguan Allspace in a solid shade of pure white, you'll have to pay extra for one of the various metallic or pearl effect paint shades or pay premium money for the single exclusive Haberno orange premium signature finish. As for practicalities, well, we'd want to look at the usual mud flaps and carpet mats and the range of roof racks and carriers for things like bicycles, skis and snowboards. For the cargo area, you can get a bespoke mat, a boot liner, a useful tray or a luggage restraint net. If you're a dog owner, you'll want the partition grill dog guard. On to safety, an area where Volkswagen has for some time claimed class leadership with this second generation Tiguan model. That's backed up by independent Euro NCAP testing that saw this car get an impressive 96% score for adult safety. All variants get twin front, side and curtain airbags plus a driver's knee bag. 
There are Isofix child seat fastenings, anti-whiplash front head restraints, and if you're towing, a trailer stabilization function to prevent dangerous trailer sway. In addition, across the range, the Wolfsburg brand has installed a clever automatic post-collision braking system that automatically brakes the car down to six miles an hour after a collision. So if, say, someone hits you and understandably you go to pieces, the car will automatically sort itself out. We additionally applaud the standard fitment of a lane assist system that will automatically steer you back into lane if you drift from it. This not only helps with long highway trips but also minimises the risk posed by dangerous oncoming traffic on country roads. Just how many lives could such a system have saved if it had been more widely available before now? Also standard on all Tiguans is a front assist system that at speed scans the road ahead as you drive for potential accident hazards, warning you if one is detected and automatically braking if necessary. You get that same kind of functionality at urban speeds too, as part of a city emergency braking system, included as part of the front assist package. This setup also includes predictive pedestrian protection that specifically searches for pedestrians who might be about to step out in front of you and if necessary can initiate braking to avoid them. On top of this there are the usual electronic systems to try and ensure that neither of these features will ever be needed. That means ESC stability control, an ASR traction control system and another electronic differential lock system. This EDL set up there to facilitate smooth starts on split friction road surfaces, say if one side of the car is on wet leaves for example. Uh, there's ABS braking of course, and panic stops will be advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard warning lights. Hill hold assist stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, and there's also an active bonnet, uh, the rear edge of which rises instantly to minimise head injuries in the nightmare scenario of an impact with a pedestrian or a cyclist. There's more too, a standard pre-crash preventative occupant protection system senses when an impact is imminent, then braces the car to better withstand it by instantly closing the windows. We've already talked about the high beam assist and dynamic light assist systems that automatically dip your headlights at night. And as another standard safety orientated feature, you also get a driver alert system that monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness, prompting you to stop for a restorative coffee if lethargy is detected. We'll also mention that the Discover navigation setup includes a traffic sign recognition feature that pictures speed signs as you pass them, displaying these on the central infotainment screen. A tyre pressure loss indicator is also part of the standard spec, but if you want to monitor your tyres in a bit more detail with a proper tyre pressure monitoring system, that'll be extra. Talking of safety extras, you can also spend more on a side scan package that works on the move to alert you if you're about to dangerously pull out to overtake when there's a car in your blind spot. And if your Tiguan Allspace is fitted with DSG auto transmission, you can specify an emergency assist system that detects when the driver is incapable of controlling the vehicle, say in the event of a heart attack or an extreme bout of illness or fatigue. In such a situation, the hazard lights would automatically be activated and the vehicle would be brought to a controlled stop within its lane. It's all very reassuring. You won't be expecting this only slightly larger Tiguan variant to be much less efficient than its standard stablemate, and it isn't. There isn't much of a weight penalty in switching to the longer all-space body. In the case of this volume 2-litre TDI variant, it's 132 kilograms. So the resulting impact on fuel returns and CO2 readings has been kept down to about 5%. Which is good news, because the figures returned by the standard version of this car were amongst the best in its class. It wasn't very long ago that spacious, mid-sized, seven-seat SUVs of this kind used to be quite expensive things to run. In fact, some of them still are. 
take the Nissan X-Trail and Mitsubishi Outlander models that compete with this car, rivals that in 2-litre diesel form can't even manage 50 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle or dip under 150 grams per kilometre of CO2. Now the volume version of this Tiguan Allspace, this 2-litre TDI 150 PS variant, can easily better that. In manual form, we're able to record 56.5 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 131 grams per kilometre of CO2. That means a first-year vehicle excise duty rate of £200, followed by £140 per annum from year two. It's also worth mentioning that the fuel and CO2 figures I've just quoted are, all, are hardly affected at all if you opt for the DSG Auto gearbox. True, you could do slightly better than that with segment rivals like Land Rover's Discovery Sport or Peugeot's 5008 2-litre blue HDI, but you might not want to. A comparably equipped Discovery Sport would be much pricier, and the Peugeot can't be had with four-wheel drive. There's not too much of a running cost penalty if you decide that you want your Tiguan Allspace with four-wheel drive. If you go for a 2.0-litre TDI 150 PS for motion derivative, you're looking at 49.6 miles to the gallon and 150 grams per kilometre for a manual model, and again only a fractional reduction if you opt for the DSG Auto. The two top diesel variants only come in DSG Auto 4 motion form. The 2 litre TDI 190 PS manages 47.9 miles to the gallon and 153 grams per kilometre. And the BI TDI 240 PS derivative manages 43.5 miles to the gallon and 170 grams per kilometre of CO2. Ought you to consider petrol power? Well, if your annual mileage is low, you shouldn't dismiss it out of hand. After all, the base 150 PS 1.4 litre TSI engine delivers 46.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 137 grams per kilometre of CO2, aided by Volkswagen's clever ACT active cylinder technology. This shuts down the engine's second and third cylinders when they're not needed under low or medium throttle load, which will mean that most of the time, buyers of this TSI variant will effectively be driving a two-cylinder Tiguan on their morning commute. Opt for the DSG Auto Gearbox with this base petrol derivative, and because it uses an older six-speed unit, the impact on fuel and CO2 is slightly greater than is the case with the diesel model. A Tiguan Allspace 1.4 TSI DSG derivative manages 43.5 miles to the gallon and 148 grams per kilometre. For completion, I'll also give you the figures for the top 180 PS 2 litre TSI variant, which comes only with full motion and DSG auto transmission and manages 36.7 miles to the gallon and 175 grams per kilometre of CO2. Obviously, all these figures are aided substantially by the sophisticated MQB modular transverse matrix platform used by all second-generation Tiguan models. On top of that, Volkswagen is constantly further refining its range of what it calls Blue Motion Technology Tweaks, a portfolio of eco-minded features that include all the usual things. Uh, stuff like brake energy recuperation and a start-stop system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. If your Tiguan Allspace has a DSG automatic gearbox, it'll also offer a coasting function that at cruising speeds will disconnect the gearbox, leaving the engine to idle until you next need it. The TDI power plants most customers will choose, like virtually all modern diesels, get a selective catalytic reduction filter to cut down on nitrous oxide and are designed around the injection of a urea-based solution called AdBlue into the exhaust gas stream to help clean up emissions. The liquid used is stored in a 12-litre tank mounted at the rear beneath the boot, and this will need topping up as part of regular servicing. You can monitor its status via a dashboard display. If you want to be more proactive than that and really play your part in improving this Tiguan's running cost efficiency, there's a lot you can do if you're prepared to fully use all of the efficiency tools that this car makes available. As you'd expect, uh, there's a gear change recommendation feature in the Instrument Binnacle Central Display screen. And if you have a four-wheel drive variant like this one, use of the four motion active control system in its normal mode gives you an eco option that focuses all of the car's systems on maximum frugality. 
Alternatively, the setup gives you programmable individual options for either normal or off-road use. And within these, there are individually selectable eco options for things like the drive system, uh, the air conditioning, and even the dynamic cornering lights. That's just the start though. Across the range, the center dash infotainment screen includes a Think Blue trainer in its car section, a display that gives you three circular dials that help with different areas of driving efficiency. The center one has two blue arcs in its outer ring, and you have to stay within these by braking and accelerating carefully. If you do, you'll achieve a higher so-called blue driving score, rated on a scale of 0 to 100 and shown in the left hand circle or graphically via a separately selectable blue score overview. Do well here and the average fuel consumption figure shown in the right hand circle will of course rise and a touch of this round graphic will take you to a graph showing your average fuel consumption over the last 30 minutes. There's also the option of accessing a series of Think Blue fuel saving tips, though to be frank, some of these are rather blindingly obvious. Things like think ahead when driving and drive in the highest possible gear. Opt for a model fitted with the active info display instrument vehicle and you can also select an efficiency branded set of virtual gauges for the instrument binnacle which duplicate the center and right hand dials of the Think Blue trainer screen, bringing all of these right into your line of sight as you drive. Can you be bothered with all of this? If you can't, it's no good complaining that the quoted running cost figures don't match those that you actually achieve. The other cost-related facts surrounding this Volkswagen though are rather more straightforward. You can expect some of the highest residual values available in the class. Uh, to be specific, you should comfortably manage to get at least 50% of the original cost of your Tiguan Allspace back if you were to sell it after a 3 year 60,000 mile ownership period. We should also give you a feel for potential insurance costings too. Uh, the base 2 litre TDI 150 PS model is rated at either Group 17E or 18E, depending on version, while for the 2 litre TDI 190 PS 4 motion variant, it'll be Group 22E or 23E. For the top 2 litre BI TDI 240 PS 4 motion derivative, it's Group 29E. For the TSI petrol versions, you're looking at Group 16E or 17E for the base 1.4 and Group 22E for the 2-litre TSI 4-motion model. As for servicing, well as usual with Volkswagen models, there's a choice of either fixed or flexible maintenance regimes. You'll choose the fixed approach if you cover less than 10,000 miles a year, and with this, the car will typically be looked at every 12 months. If your daily commute is more than 25 miles and your Tiguan Allspace will regularly be driven on longer distance journeys, then you'll be able to work with a flexible regime that can see you traveling, uh, well, up to 18,000 miles between garage visits or every two years, whichever is sooner. And warranties? Well, this standard package is three years and 60,000 miles. Can't see why Volkswagen couldn't extend that mileage limit to 100,000 miles since that's what you get on its mechanically very similar Caddy model. Doing that though wouldn't give Volkswagen dealers so much of an opportunity to sell extended warranty packages. There's one for four years and 75,000 miles or if you plan to see a bit more of the world in your Tiguan Allspace, there's a five year 90,000 mile package. Whatever your decision, your car will come with three years of pan-European roadside assistance that has no mileage restriction. The paintwork warranty lasts for three years and as you'd expect, this SUV is protected by a 12-year anti-corrosion package. As with the ordinary Tiguan model, provided you don't expect this all-space derivative to be among the cheaper choices in this segment, then there's very little not to like. For less than the cost of, say, a five-seat Audi Q5 or Mercedes GLC, you can get yourself in this seven-seat Volkswagen, a family SUV with almost equal badge equity, but quite a lot more versatility. 
The brand predicts that the Allspace body style will account for one in every five Tiguans sold in our market. But it's quite possible that this variant could take a more generous slice of sales than that. After all, it adds significant extra versatility to all the established virtues of this model. Things like high residuals, impressive efficiency and a classy cabin. Plus, as ever with a Volkswagen SUV, there's an extra dash of polish in everything it does that'll make you feel as good when you open the bedroom window as you will when you're at the wheel. It's just as well that all this is the case because if it wasn't it'd be tempting on the test drive to start considering other more affordable options in this segment. Primarily perhaps the kind of slightly larger Skoda Kodiak that delivers even more seven seat versatility and pretty much all the same engineering for a lot less but you can't really imagine a Kodiak or, for that matter, other well-specified rivals like Nissan's X-Trail or Peugeot's 5008 ever being bought as an alternative to a premium-badged SUV in the D segment. A Tiguan Allspace might be. That's the difference. Are there other issues aside from price? Well, some rivals are slightly more spacious. Then there's the annoying lack of Isofix child seat fastenings in the third seating row. Otherwise, though, this is a very complete product indeed. It's beautifully built, efficient to run, easy to live with and practical to own. Other segment alternatives make similar claims, but after trying them following a Tiguan Allspace test drive, you might end up feeling you'd be prepared to pay just a touch more 